Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar in which we shall explain the regulations and measures for companies in face of the COVID-19 crisis in Spain, the declaration of this state of alarm and the suspension, the suspension of non-essential activities. Uh, today, uh, the speakers shall be uh, Lara Vivas and myself, Ana Campos, as unforeseen circumstances have prevented our colleague, Elizabeth Calzada, who was initially announced as a speaker, from being present today. If you have any questions regarding our exposition this afternoon or uh, later on, please direct them uh, through the chat or email to webinars at cuatrecasas.com. Do not hesitate to post any questions you may have. Um, let me introduce ourselves. Lara Vivas is a partner of the Labor and Employment Area in Cuatro Casas. She has great experience on all matters of labor and employment um, uh, advice, especially specializing very significantly in collective issues such as collective bargaining, collective conflicts, um, uh, collective terminations, and nowadays she's an expert at, at on temporary uh, redundancy plans. Um, she has also great international experience and works a lot with uh, overseas uh, clients. Um, myself, my name is um, Ana Campos. I'm a senior associate at Cuatro Casas. We have an, an area of uh, specialized in knowledge and innovation, and I uh, am a member of that area uh, in the division of labor and employment. We try to keep abreast of all news and uh, significant modification of our regulations uh, in the in the in, uh, in 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 Spain and all over the world, and try to anticipate to all the news. Um, Anna, sorry to yes. interrupt. This is this is Lara Vivas speaking. Welcome everyone to our webinar this afternoon. Uh, let me say one more word about Anna Campos. She works in our I call it our intelligence team. They have been the people who have been. Uh, watching over and making sure that we didn't, you know, that we were completely updated all these COVID crises and including this weekend, as you will see later on, where there's been a lot of new developments and she has been one of the team members keeping us updated. So we, we really, really are a much in a bit, much better position to advise uh, thanks to this intelligence uh, team, the our knowledge team. And Anna is, is there. Um, the way we will proceed to this afternoon will include Anna summarizing just a little bit as an introduction the 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 where we stand, what happened during the past weeks, and then I will go on and explain the new laws of this weekend because uh, there's laws every day and there's been two new regulations very substantial passing on this weekend. She will then summarize a little bit our, our webinar today, and if possible, we'll take a couple of questions. And thank you. Do you thank want to you go on much. with the summary? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Lara. Well, as Lara was saying, we are uh, living in uh, all over the world in very uncertain, and I may say scary times, and this has um, led us to a you know, an avalanche and a turmoil of new regulations in the last couple of weeks, which have really altered our, our world and as the circumstances uh, of the pandemic. Um, let me um, set a bit the framework of our situation in the in the last few weeks. Um, uh, the relevant background regulations. Well, the pandemic in Spain is of a very serious nature. We uh, it, it arrived. I don't know if our government reacted late or we were slow to proceed. I, I, I don't want to go into that, but the truth is that uh, our situation is very dire and we have a lot of sick people and, and, and uh, lots of contagi uh, contagions all over the country. Um, uh, this uh, has led us, I was, as I was saying, into a, a lot of new regulations and, measure, and measures in order to face it. And they have affected directly the workplace, the regulations in our workplace. Um, one of the main things that happened a bit more than two weeks ago was the declaration of the state of alarm or by Royal Decree 463-2020 on March 14. Um, as in every country, the state of emergency, the, the state of alarm is an extraordinary regime provided for situations of serious disruptions on, uh, and the risk of shortage of essential products. I mean, in this case, the serious disruption is obviously the health crisis, uh, crisis caused by the, um, by the pandemic. 
um, declaring the state of alarm allows the government to take temporary measures having a major impact on all the so uh, on all society and businesses. Uh, in this case, what the Royal Decree 463 did was it contained concert, uh, commercial activity, limiting um, certain uh, the opening of businesses to certain activities. Not all countries, not all activities could be open and, and continue their business, and a lot of uh, uh, activities have to be closed down at least temporarily till the state of alarm was over. It also imposed um, a rules on free movement of of citizens. At first, um, uh, going to work was allowed, was permitted, so people could go to work, but now this has been even more restricted, as Lara will explain uh, shortly. And uh, and we were, uh, all the country was confined uh, to, to our homes unless we were permitted to go to work. Um, uh, these measures have become even greater uh, this weekend, as I was saying, as Lara will explain, even more businesses have been closed uh, or temporarily. And this has led, uh, the first impact of the declaration of the state of alarm led to a substantial amount of companies, a very large number of companies, as Lara, will, uh, as Lara has, has been witness to, to try to adjust to the new circumstances by uh, using the rules in our, in our legislation to uh, provide it for adjusting to, to temporary situations like uh, temporary redundancy plans. So just uh, four days after the uh, declaration of alarm was, um, uh, was implemented on, um, on March 18th, uh, Royal Decree Law 8 2020 on urgent extraordinary measures in face of the economic and social impact of COVID-19 was passed and published. Why this royal decree? Because what the government wanted and intended is that for companies intended to bolster this flexibility measure, the temporary redundancies instead of terminations. And what, what it did in order to safeguard jobs is facilitate this temporary suspension of employment or reduction of working time. We call them ERTE in Spanish. Um, so it flexibilized the conditions to reach, uh, to be able to do a temporary uh, procedure, either for force majeure or for business related grounds based or connected to COVID-19. Um, it shortened terms for the negotiation and agreement on, on these issues, and it facilitated the process. It also established, um, uh, uh, established that companies would could be exempt from paying social security contribution during the temporary redundancy plans. Um, this was also a, a measure in order to uh, avoid companies having too much of a burden during this period. Um, and also it implemented some unemployment benefits for employees affected by temporary redundancy plan. Namely, um, um, employees do not have to have a prior requirement of contribution to social security to be able to receive unemployment benefits. And the unemployment benefits they would receive during the temporary dancing plan will not be taken out of the future unemployment benefits. This is in order to facilitate agreements in, in workplaces or regarding um, temporary redundancy plans. This, all these measures are, are conditioned to the safeguard of jobs. Um, companies using these procedures have to commit to the safeguard of jobs within a certain period of time when their activity is reinitiated. Uh, also, Royal Decree um, 8 uh, implemented essential, a series of measures to facilitate work. Considering all schools are closed, activities have been closed down, and people have to stay at home, what this Royal Decree fosters is the uh, remote working uh, companies instead of have to promote the remote working of their employees by all means and, and uh, where, where it's possible and feasible and it's not disproportionate. Also, they have to adjust their working hours to, to their employees' circumstances to in order to reconcile work and family. And, and the, the employees are entitled to more possibilities of working time adaptation than before during uh, this crisis in order for because if people are working from home, they, it is more difficult for them to uh, do a conventional uh, working timetable. It also facilitates working time reduction, including the possibility of a 100% working time reduction on employees who justify the need to, during this period, uh, not work at all, not receive any, any payment, obviously, but 
being still employees of the company in order to be able to take care of family and reconcile their personal life with their obligations. Um, at this point, uh, the, the state of alarm has been extended on March 25th uh, for 15 additional days until until April uh, 12th. Uh, apologies, there is a typo on, on there's a mistake on the on the presentation um, till April 12th. But it's um, we all believe that this uh, period of a state of alarm will be even more extended because the situation in Spain uh, has yet to start improving, and so it's April 12th seems like very a very short time. So and then. These were, these were the first measures that were taken on March 14th and March 18th, which looks like three years ago, but it was actually less than two weeks ago. And this weekend, we had another two uh, regulations coming to force. We have been very, very important for uh, the management of labor relations. And Lara, with this, I pass the turn to you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. So, uh, yes, we had a very busy weekend uh, for all employment uh, lawyers this weekend. Uh, we had two new regulations passing on, uh, one on Saturday, the other one announced on Saturday, but only passed yesterday at around midnight. Um, the first regulation is the one you see on this on this slide. It's uh, 92020. Um, it what it what is doing it is it is setting very relevant restrictions in terms of employment. The first one, which is uh, very relevant, is the prohibition to dismiss uh, or terminate contracts based on COVID-19 uh, throughout uh, the crisis. And uh, you know, significantly enough, it doesn't tell us which period of time precisely, but it does say that the COVID-19 crisis will not be justification for the terminations of the contracts. Um, it's a very broad definition. It doesn't say exactly what, and it doesn't say exactly for how long. But there we are. There is a, a clear restriction of termination of contracts related to COVID. Um, there's also an additional uh, an additional restriction in terms of uh, employment contracts. It has to do with temporary in contra employment contracts, because these regulations sets forth that um, fixed term contracts, sorry, uh, so those who have a limited duration will will be suspended during uh, a near day. So basically, if there was a contract with a month duration ending, I don't know, the 15th of April. What happens from now on is that if the contract is put into an air day because there's no work to do, because it's one of the activities that has been restricted, um, the contract will be extended for the period of time that this temporary contract is put on this temporary suspension due to COVID. So basically, it doesn't allow terminating them due to COVID as the rest of the contracts uh, have also been restricted. Um, there's again uh, quite a lot of, uh, of confusion in terms of the temporary contracts and why would they not be extended, but this is basically what is going on. So if we need to terminate a contract that is ending, let's say today, what would happen is that it could not be affected by a suspension in working time. And that would be the only way to reach the term of the contract uh, without further extension. Um, there's been some clarifications on this on this regulation from Saturday. Uh, it has been said that the first measure con, uh, ERTES uh, will have a duration coincident with the state of alarm. So in the current situation until April 12th. Um, this is because some of the agreements that have been reached uh, extended the duration of the first measure ERTE beyond that date. But the regulation has clarified what's the at least what's the intention of the law and what should be the duration of this force majeure ERTE. Uh, there's uh, so also some regulations on the Saturday law that have to do with the filing of unemployment benefits. This has been a practicality that is actually very relevant and the law has now stated that companies have to file the request for unemployment benefits for all employees who are affected by an, a temporary suspension of contracts an ERTE, and the company has to file those uh, unemployment benefits in a period of five days from the filing. 
um, or in the case of a business related uh, reason, five days from the filing to the labor authority. So uh, basically that, that will apply to the upcoming ERTES. Uh, for those that were filed before Saturday, uh, there will be five days starting from Saturday. Uh, there's been also some new regulations trying to uh, uh, give sanctions to companies that have been uh, filing ERTES with not detailed or precise uh, information. So there's been new sanctions put in place that in case of false or inaccurate information, um, there might be uh, sanctions being imposed to them. And then there's a few other regulations having to do with the public sector, but uh, for the purpose of this uh, of this webinar, uh, it's just good that you know that that they are there, but we will not go into them in more detail. Uh, what's also relevant is a regulation that was passed on Saturday. Uh, sorry, on that was announced on Saturday, but only passed yesterday evening. This is the regulation 10 2020. As you saw, the previous one was the 9 2020. This one is from 10 2020. Um, this is a regulation that is basically imposing further restrictions in activity. So we had uh, basically uh, all uh, all trade that was on the streets had stopped from the beginning of the state of alarm, but businesses and industries still were working normally, or at least they were not they were not restricted by the government in their in their work. What has happened starting effective tomorrow is that certain activities that the rest of activities will not be allowed either. So the only activities that will be permitted will be those considered as essential. Um, to define what's essential, the regulation has drafted a very long, well, a relevantly a quite long uh, um, uh, description of the activities. And they include very basic, uh, uh, very basic activities such as, uh, you know, those related to food or the trade of food and beverages. It has to do with uh, pharmaceuticals. All activities relating to health and healthcare have been obviously uh, allowed. Uh, but all other activities that are not directly linked or that are not a source for those essential activities have been restricted as well as the other ones were restricted for the past couple of weeks. So basically, uh, for all those companies that are not essential services under this law, employees will be uh, will will not be uh, allowed to go physically to the offices. Everything that can be done remotely is perfectly acceptable, but not those activities that require actually moving around um, the the Spanish territory. So for those activities that are not essential, the law has put in place a new and an, an alternative uh, way for the employees to for the companies to behave they have created a remunerated leave that actually uh, what creates is just a, 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 a bank of hours that employees who are not going to be working from uh, tomorrow until uh, april the, the april 9th so for that period of time uh, employees who are not going to be working during that period, they will accumulate the working hours that they have not worked and they will owe those working hours to the employer once uh, the period of time has ended. Um, the company and the employee's representatives will need to address how to recover or how to work those hours. It can be either compensated through holidays if the employees already have accrued holidays and can and can just attribute those those non-worked hours to holidays, or they can actually work them afterwards. Um, if the parties do not reach an agreement, the company will be able to impose the solution and say how they want these employees who have not worked from uh, from March 31st until April 9th, they will be able to tell them how to recover those hours. Um, this is for your for just to understand the period of time right before Easter holidays in Spain that will start. Uh, generally speaking, in the territory on Thursday, uh, April uh, April 9th. Um, so uh, this is basically what they have put in 
place it is opening quite a lot of questions because it's as usual these days not fully clear uh, but at least you can have uh, an, in a nutshell an idea of what has been governed uh, regulated in the in the past uh, couple of days um, Anna do you want to go for a Thank you very much, Lara. So, um, as you can see, we are uh, living in a very uh, complex situation with a lot of new um, uh, rules changing our, our basic uh, concepts of, 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 of some of our regulations and uh, raising a lot of questions and all in a very fast moving, at a very fast moving pace and uh, with companies in a very serious situation uh, trying to address this uh, these, these issues. Um, uh, as uh, Lara was saying, uh, or, uh, or uh, you may address your questions to the uh, webinar um, address I, I said before, and also we have a multitasking force here at Cuatre Casas, which is uh, a COVID-19 multitasking force uh, made up of several types of professionals and different areas, and you can address questions at queries.covid19 at cuatrecasas.com. Um, uh, as a recap, um, what I could say from all these um, rules and regulations is that uh, this is not finished. We expect more. Uh, there's sure to be more, and 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 we will keep you uh, posted and inform of all these changes and 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 call for more webinars. And I don't know what the we don't know yet what the new things will be, but we are certain they will be, or at least they will set, uh, hopefully they will set criteria to clarify some of the questions that are raised by these regulations. Um, I don't Anna, know, Lara, uh, you want? Yes, yes uh, maybe even if we're out of time, let me take one question, the, one of the questions that we received in just one minute. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the questions was whether the restriction that has been put in place for the activities that are not essential entails that uh, they that, that they really cannot have anyone working. Let's say if we have a, a premises like a like a general uh, industry, you know, that is uh, that is building, I don't know, whatever whatever products that are now not considered essential. And um, what I want to point out is that the list is not is uh, the list has a list of activities that are considered essential, but it also allows that companies. Uh, that are not essential can at least uh, work with the minimum services necessary to maintain and ensure that the premises will be safeguarded in, in, in good terms. So the fact that they cannot be normally working doesn't mean that they cannot have minimum stuff, uh, stuff that will be taken yeah. care of the premises, okay? Um, we don't have more time. I think, Anna, we should uh, close it, this down. We'll, as Anna said, we'll go on with, with more webinars, with more news, because there are news every week. <laughs> um, but, uh, but apart from there, uh, thank you, Anna, and thanks for all these, uh, all these uh, news that we are putting together these days. You'll find more information on our website, and we just want to thank you for your assistance and make sure that uh, you know that you stay home and that you stay safe thank you thank you very much